Did you ever want to learn how to solve the Rubik's Cube? And not just the Rubik's Cube, uh, but any puzzle like this where pieces move around or slide around or change positions. And to do it without a bunch of memorized patterns, but through just some fundamentals of how puzzles like this work. Well, this is a series of videos that takes you through starting with some very simple puzzles and building all the way up until the end. You could do a Rubik's Cube or 4x4 four four Rubik's Cube or you know any number of puzzles. It's all based on a type of math that's called group theory. And I'm going to take you through the fundamentals of this. You'll need to have the uh, Permutant app, which you can hopefully get on the App Store, although I can give you a link for um, to get it on test flight. But you need some kind of uh, iPad or iPhone because it's, it's an iOS application. And on this version, <clears throat> the first puzzle, there are 26 different challenges. But the one we're going to look at is uh, challenge number one. So to uh, get a feel for these puzzles, uh, challenge one is the most basic challenge. And the way it works is we have these 16 numbers arranged in a grid. And the goal is to get them in order. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now, the movements, the, there's, the, the, moves you're, the move you're allowed to make is you can click on any two, any two things of the numbers. And here I'm clicking on the 10 and the 16. And watch what it will do is it will swap their places. So now the 10's where the 16 was. And the 16s where the 10 was, I could undo it or I could do it again and get back to the starting position. So I'm going to recommend that you just mess around with this riddle. You know, you can click any two things and it will swap them. Um, some things that you could think about are uh, how many different starting positions are there for, for this game? Another question you might think about is how many different sort of movements am I, am I allowed to make in this in this version of this game so those are things to think about i'm going to recommend you uh oh and if you want to make your board look just like mine because you probably have a random that's not this if you push the custom button you can then uh click on the empty boxes and create this pattern so it sort of matches up but why don't you take a few minutes to mess around with this riddle um what do you think the minimum number of movements it takes to solve it, and just try to master challenge number one. Okay, so we're back. I'll give you some answers to some of these questions. Now, the number of total starting patterns for a game like this is actually... Uh, 16 factorial, which means 16 times 15 times 14 times 13 all the way down to 1. Uh, that's actually 20 trillion, 922 billion, 789 million, 888 thousand different starting positions that could happen. So almost 21 trillion. Now the moves that you could make, um, there's 120 different moves that you could make as you're doing this puzzle. Uh, the there's 120 possible moves because basically you can pick any of 16 numbers to be sort of the first number you click, and then you can pick any of the other 15 numbers as your second number to click. If you do 16 uh, times 15, you get 240. Um, but whether you click like the number in position one and the number in position three, or you click the number in position three and the number in position one, those count as the same thing, so we need to divide by two. So those are just some things. There's 120 moves that you can make. There's 21 trillion starting positions. Um, one way that you can always solve this puzzle is just to go one number at a time. Swap the number one into position one, swap the number two into position two, 
Maybe you'll get lucky. Some of them are already in their right position. Swap the number three into position three, the number four into position four, the number five into the position five, six to six, seven to seven. Notice eight's already there. Nine goes to position nine. 10 goes to position 10. 11 was already there. 12 goes to position 12. And 13, 14, 15, and 16 are already there. So with that approach, I think the worst case scenario would be 15 moves because once you get the 15th thing into place, the 16th one will already be there, but it could take uh, fewer moves. This is any one of the games that we'll analyze. Uh, one thing that might be interesting is if you were to try to list out what all the moves were like ahead of time when you when you had a starting pattern and you listed them out, um, it could get a little confusing. We're going to see there is a way to, to make a full list of all the moves that would solve the puzzle before even starting. Um, it's not that easy of a thing to do. Okay, a, a second puzzle that I want you to, to look at, if you go back to the menu, um, puzzle number five. Now, puzzle number five looks a lot like puzzle number one. Still, it's got the 16 things. I can still swap two things, but there's not 120 different moves this time. There's actually only 15 different moves because you can't swap any two things with this puzzle. You can swap anything with position one, but you can't swap two things if... if if one of them is not in position one, you can't do it. So you can only swap with position one. Now this is harder because without having 120 different moves to make, but only having 15 different legal moves, uh, it, it seems like it may not even always be possible. But it actually is always possible. And why don't you take a few minutes to think about this puzzle and... Does it take a lot more? The, the, the other move had a worst case scenario of about 15 moves. Does, does this one having only um, 15 possible moves mean that it's going to take potentially a lot more moves to solve? Anyway, why don't you take some time, push pause, and mess around with this puzzle for a bit. Okay, now you're back. I'll give you uh, some insights into... Um, into this puzzle. I could, if I do, I could easily put number one into its proper place, but you know, I can't get two into its proper place that easily. So the trick is, uh, the, the sort of most basic way of doing this is it would take about two moves each time to get something into its right place. So, so to get two into position two, I have to move two into position one and then swap position two. And then to get three, I can move three to position one and then swap three into position three. This is not the most efficient way. This way is going to take about 30 moves because it's going to take one, two moves to get one number into its right place. But I still can do it, so I will. But later on, we'll learn how this one could be done in a lot less moves. I mean, it will still take somewhere around 15 moves, maybe 20, but it's not going to take, this method I'm showing you right here would take about 30 moves. Might as well finish it up, put 9. All I'm doing is putting 10 to the first position and then swapping it from the first position to where it wants to go. Here the 11 is already in its first position. Put 12 into his first position, put 12 where it wants to go, put 13 into the first position. And this is about a 30 move solution, but I still think it's interesting to, to think about. Okay, so that one took about 30 moves, but there, there are plenty of other ways to to do this. Maybe if I, um, if I mix instead of... Um, Instead of trying to say, okay, I want to put one into its right place, then say, what if I just say, okay, two's in the first place. Let me move it where it wants to go. Well, now one is. That's a bit annoying. Let's just put someone random into one's place. And now say I'll put 16 where he wants to go. Now I'll put 14 where he wants to go. 
Now I'll put 11 where he wants to go. Now I'll put 12 where he wants to go. Put the 13 where he wants to go. Put the 8 where he wants to go. The one's already there, so it's like a little annoying there. So I'm just going to kind of put someone random in there and say put the 9 where he wants to go. Put the 5 where he wants to go. Again, anytime the 1 gets there, it's slightly annoying. I'll just put someone else there. Put the 4 where he wants to go. Put the 3 where he wants to go. What's funny is that we actually don't want the 1 in his right place. It's better if someone else is. So I'll move someone else there. Put the 15 where he wants to go. Put the 6 where he wants to go. And as you can see, by using that approach, it took not that much more than 15 moves. It did not take 30 moves. The only time we ran into a little bit of trouble is sometimes the 1 did end up in its right place and we needed to kind of put someone else there. Anyway, that's like an interesting puzzle also to mess around with. And the third sort of introductory puzzle is uh, puzzle number two. And I'm going to rearrange this for a second. Okay, I've rearranged this to have the same configuration as when I was doing uh, puzzle number one before. So the way this puzzle works, um, there's actually, the move is kind of complicated. You can click on any three things. And when I click on this third one, what's going to happen is that the thing I clicked first is going to move to the position of the thing I click second. And the thing I click second will move to the position of the thing I click third. And the thing I click third will move to the position of where the thing I clicked first was. So when I click on this four, the 10 is going to go where the 14 was, the 14 is going to go where the four is, and the four is going to go where the 10 is. And you can see that happens. So the order matters in this case. If I want to go back, I can just do a sort of counterclockwise. And you could take any three things and do this move with it. Um, this may seem like a harder puzzle. Actually, it's, uh, it's easier in the sense that you can do it in fewer moves. There are actually 1,120 different moves that you could make. Any sort of, if you pick three things, even though not picking position two, position five, and position 10 is the same thing as picking like them in this order or them in this order. That's the same move. But if I, I can go counterclockwise if I want. And there's so many ways to get three things that it's actually 1,120 different moves I'm allowed to make. Um, I'll tell you that this puzzle can be usually done in about eight moves. So why don't you mess around for a bit and see if you can find some strategies for that. You can pause now. Okay, now uh, you've unpaused. I'm going to give away a way I might solve this puzzle. Um, I'll go, I'll say, well, the one wants to go to this position, but there's already a six in that position. So where does six want to go? Well, six wants to go here. So when I do this, the 1 and the 6 will be in their proper places. Now this third thing, the 12, well, that's going to end up where the 1 was, so that's not in the right place. So, But I did end up getting two things into their right place. And I do the same thing here. 2 wants to go to 14. 14 wants to be here. So I've got the 2 and the 14 in the right place. And the 4 is not, but that's OK. I've, now I've got four things in the right place. 3 wants to go to position 10. And 10 wants to go. 3 wants to go where the 10 is, and the 10 wants to go over here. 4 wants to go where the 12 is, the 12 wants to go here. So each time I'm getting two things in place. The 5 wants to go where 16 is, and the 16 wants to go where the 9 is. So by doing this, the 5 and the 16. So each time I'm getting one of these low numbers in and some other numbers. So 7 wants to go here, the 9 wants to go there. And now actually the puzzle's done, and it took less than eight moves. So that puzzle, in, in, in one sense, is easier because it's faster. But in another sense, it's harder because what if I were to ask you to make a list of all the movements you have to make, like at the beginning, like give somebody a list, do these eight moves to solve it, and you weren't able to like do one at a time. Uh, that seems like it might be a little more complicated. But this is a faster puzzle. It takes fewer moves. So those are our three like puzzles to like 
get ourselves started. And I do recommend you mess around with those three puzzles until you feel like you um, you have them uh, mastered. The type of math used in puzzles like this is known as a uh, group theory. And for our purposes, I want to use like a like a simpler puzzle for now. What about what if instead of sixteen squares, uh, there are only eight squares, and the squares were not arranged in a grid, but they were arranged sort of next to each other like this. So there were eight squares like this, and let's say I shuffle. Uh, the squares around so that now the board looks like this six one two three let's say the squares get mixed up so now they're like this uh, one thing you might notice is that some of the numbers might be in their original position still like in this case uh, the seven still in its original position. Um, there are many ways that we can rearrange these eight squares, namely uh, eight factorial, which is eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, which is actually 40,320. Well, that's a lot less than the 21 trillion ways for the puzzle with the 16 squares in it. Were. I want to show you a few ways that we can describe how the numbers have changed, like now that they're in this state. I mean, what, one way is just to just give this picture, but that's not going to be uh, the, the most useful way for us. So I'm going to give a couple of more ways to do that. Another way to describe this, this 6, 1, 2, 3, 8, 4, 7, 5, is to write the numbers 1 through 8. And you can put these in like parentheses. It's going to be sort of this is sort of something called the two line uh, way. And underneath, I'm not going to write six one two three eight four seven five, but I'm going to write the position that each number is in. Like this number one here, one is no longer in the first position. It's in position number two because this is. Oh, I'm all even right. Well, you can actually see that this is. I'll just put a little one two three four five six seven. Those are the position numbers. So the 1 is in position 2, and the 2 is in position 3, and the 3 is in position 4, and the 4 is in position 6, and the 5 is in position 8, and the 6 is in position 1, and the 7 is still in its original position, and the 8 here is in position 5. So this is one way to describe where all the numbers are. This original way, where everything's still in its original position, that could just look like this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are, um, there's two other ways to represent this starting position. Another way is called the arrow diagram, and the way it works is. Write one through eight, put a little dot underneath each of them. And then I'm going to put, leave a little space and write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And these eight, I'm going to put a little dot above them. Now, going back to, to here, the, um, the one, actually, I find the one, the one is in position two. So I make an arrow, the one to the two. And the two is in the third position, so I go like that. And the three is in the fourth position, so I make this arrow. And the four is ending up in the sixth position, so I make from four to six. And the five is all the way in the eighth position. And the 6 is in the first position. And the 7 actually is still in the 7th position. So we have a straight down. And the 5, sorry, 
the 8 is in the 5th position. Now this does look pretty ugly, but this is going to be pretty useful uh, in a future lesson. It's going to help us do some operations with these um, they call permutations, ways of mixing up, in this case, the numbers 1 through 8. And this arrow diagram, it's going to, it is going to serve a purpose. There is a third method, and it's the most useful at all. So this is this one's the arrow diagram. It will have a purpose coming up. This one's not going to be so useful to us, this, uh, this two-line two version. But uh, the one that's going to be most useful to us is going to be called cycle notation. I'll explain what this is. Uh, the way cycle notation is, is um, we start with a, with a, the lowest number that's not in its original place. So in this case, it's the 1. The parentheses and a 1. And then we say, okay, well, where did number, what, what position is number 1 in? Well, it's in position number 2. So I put a 2 here to say that the 1, the 1 is now in position 2. Then I look and look for the 2 and say, okay, well, well, in what position is the 2? Well, the 2 is in the third position, so I put a 3 here. And the 3 is in position 4, so I put a 4 there. Then I look for the 4, and I see he's in position 6, so I put a 6 there. Then I look for the 6 down here, and I find the 6 is in position 1. I don't write a 1 here, because uh, when I come back to the first number, and this will always happen, because you're going to run out of numbers, so at some point you're going to get back to the number uh, back to the number one sometime sooner than later in this case it happened so because six goes to position one I close up parentheses but I'm not done yet because some numbers haven't been accounted for so I find the lowest number that's not been used already which is the number five and I'm looking for the lowest number that's not in its original position which is five so I start my second cycle with the number 5. And I say, well, where is 5? He's in the 8th position, so I put an 8 here. Then I look for the 8, and the 8 is in the 5th position. The 5 is already there, so I close up the parentheses. Now, the only number that hasn't been used is the number 7. And you could go like that. That basically says that 7 does not move at all. But usually, we don't even write that at all. So this cycle notation, it is the most efficient way to describe this starting state. It also gives us a little bit of insight into what's going on, like this 5, 8 means that 5 and 8 switch places. Um, and this 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 tells us about what's like a cycle that the 1 goes to position 2, and the 2 goes to 3, and the 3 goes to 4, and the 4 goes to 6, and the 6 goes back to 1. So this cycle notation is going to be our sort of most uh, useful way of um, way of doing this. As an exercise, why don't you try to uh, represent this starting state in all three ways. You pause and, and do that. And then when you push pause again, I'll come back and explain. Pause now. Okay, let's look at the three ways. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We say 1 is already in position 1, 2 is down here in position 6, 3 is already in position 3, 4 is all the way over there in position 8, 5 is already in position 5, 6 is in position 2, 7 is already in position 7, and 8 is in position 4. So that's the um, two-line way. If I want to do the Five, six, seven, eight. The arrow diagram. Okay, so one stays at position one. Two goes all the way to six. Three stays in position three. Four goes all the way down to eight. Five stays at five. Six goes back to two. Uh, 7 is in position 7, and the 8 here is in position 
four. There's your error diagram. Uh, what's neat about this one is the cycle. The first number that's not in its original place is two, and two goes to position six, and six goes to position two, which is the first number, so that cycle gets closed up. Three is in its right place. The next number that's not in its right place is four, so our second cycle starts with four, and uh, four is in position eight, and eight's in position four. So this is a really this thing is a really simple way of describing the starting the state of this. And uh, this any of these 40,000 ways of rearranging these eight numbers is called a permutation. Apply this way of describing the starting state to the puzzle we just did. I'm going to go right to the cycle notation. So the first number that's not in its right place is 1. The 1's all the way over here in position 15. And the 15 is over here in position 11. And I look for the 11 and he's over here in position 9. Whereas the 9 is all the way over there in position 16. Whoops. Cycle's not done yet. The 16 is over here in position 6. The 6 is over here in position 10. The 10 is over here in position 5. It doesn't seem like the cycle's ever going to end, but it will. The 5 is over here in position 13. The 13 is in position 2. And the 2 is in position 3. And 3 is in position 12. And 12 is in position 4. This is quite a big cycle. Hold on a second. It gives me a little more room. And the 4 is in position 1, which is number 1 begins the cycle. So this thing has a really long cycle. And it is funny how, like, it will, it must come back to number 1 eventually, because you will, in the worst case scenario, run out of numbers and have one uh, big cycle. Uh, it turns out that the, um, the 7, the 8, and the 14 are actually already in their original positions. So, um, so this thing has this, it's got this one giant cycle. Okay, a good exercise is to try to do, this is the one that we had done uh, a couple of times in the, in the app itself. Let's see what happens. So the 1 is in position 4, and the 4 is in position 8, 9, 10, 11, and the 11 is in position 6, and the 6 is in position 1, so that's one cycle. Then I go for number 2 is not in its right place, but 2 is down here in position 14, and 14 is there in position 5, and 5 is in position 7, and 7 is all the way here in position 12, and 12 is in position 9, and 9 is in position 2, which we already have. Uh, 3 is the next number that's not in his right place. 3 is all the way here in position 16. 16, on the other hand, is at um, eight, in position um, 8, 9, position 10, and 10 is there in position 3, which is the end of that cycle. Uh, eight's already in his right place, so is 13 and 15, so I don't need to put those in at all. I could. It wouldn't be wrong to say that they're each sort of their own cycle, but it's usual to just not have those. Okay. So what we've seen is there are many, there are different ways to describe a permutation. A permutation is any sort of shuffling of things like this. Um, there's so there's trillions of ways, but uh, trillions of permutations, but each one can be described with three different ways. And the um, this cycle notation is kind of the easiest and the most useful of ways to describe the uh, starting permutation. The fun exercise is to try to take the six different permutations of three things and turn them into cycle notation. Why don't you pause and think about that for a second? here are the answers for those that are all different. This first one doesn't change at all, so you could just 
write it with these two open parentheses, close parentheses, but otherwise you can see the second one, two and three are swapped, one and two are swapped, this one, one and three are swapped.